Hi, I'm the narrator. Welcome to Storytime. Today's story is called The Berenstain Bears Trick or Treat. Even little bears expect a good fright when they go out for treats on Halloween night. Now, this story is part of the Berenstain Bears series. And it's by Stan and Jan Berenstein. The sights and sounds of autumn were all around as Mama Bear pushed her shopping cart along the path that led to the Bear family's treehouse. The trees and shrubs were ablaze with color. Farmer Ben's pumpkins stood bright orange in the October sun. The crows called noisily as they searched the stubble for bits of corn. Wild geese in great V formations honked high in the sky as they flew south. <laughs> but the surest sign of the season was inside the treehouse hiding behind Papa Bear's easy chair. It was Brother Bear waiting to try out his Halloween costume on Mama. It wasn't Halloween yet, but brother and sister couldn't wait to try on their newest costumes. Sister was going to be a beautiful ballerina. Well, what do you think? She asked, taking the third position. Shh, said brother. Mama's coming. Brother had chosen to be a spooky monster on Halloween. He had bought the spookiest monster mask he could find, and Mama made the rest of the costume. Boo! He shouted as Mama came in with the groceries. Hell, a monster, she cried, pretending to be frightened. It's only me, Mama, he said, showing his face. So it is, said Mama. Well, that just goes to show that appearances can be deceiving. Appearances can be deceiving? What's that mean? asked sister. It's a grown-up way of saying that things aren't always what they look like, explained Mama as she unpacked the groceries. Look, goodies, said brother. Hands off, please, said Mama. Those are for trick-or-treaters who come to our house tomorrow night. Brother and sister were very excited about Halloween and a little nervous too. This was the first year they would be going trick-or-treating without a grown-up along to supervise. I'm not sure I like the idea of them going by themselves, said Papa as he carved the pumpkin he got from Farmer Ben. It's pretty spooky out there, he added, making a scary face at the cubs. Now, Papa, said Mama, if brother and sister want to accept the challenge of going out on their own, I think we should encourage them. But remember, she continued, turning to the cubs, there'll be strict rules. You'll stay in your own neighborhood and you won't eat any of the treats until you come back home home. Besides, said brother, we won't really be by ourselves. We made a trick-or-treat date with cousin Freddie, Lizzie Bruin, and Queenie McBear. Can you see how proud Papa Bear is of the pumpkin he worked on? There, said Papa, putting the finishing touches on the jack-o'-lantern. Then, he lit a candle inside it and turned out all the lights. It was pretty scary. The next day, brother and sister began planning the trick-or-treat route they'd follow that night. Brother got a pencil and paper and made a map of the neighborhood. That way, he explained, they wouldn't miss anybody. Let's see now, he said. We'll stop at our houses first. Ours, Freddy's, Lizzie's, and Queenie's. Then we'll do Farmer Ben's and our sitters, Mrs. Grizzle. Mrs. Grizzle's for sure, agreed sister. She usually makes special Halloween cookies. And Teacher Jane, 
She gives out good stuff. How about Dr. Grizzly, asked brother. She's into healthy snacks. I think so. Just, just to be polite, said sis. Gramps and Gran, of course. Of course. I'll tell you one place we are going to miss, said brother, folding his map. What place is that, asked sister. That one, he answered, pointing out the window at the home of old Ms. McGriz. It was a spooky, twisted old treehouse in a thicket at the end of Crooked Lane. We're definitely not going there, he added with a shiver. <laughs> Why ever not, asked Mama, who was listening. Why not, said the cubs. Because she's a witch. That's why not. What utter nonsense, protested Mama. True, Miss McGriz is old and bent and rather forbidding looking. But I can assure you, she's a perfectly nice person. But the cubs didn't believe her. Not for a minute. They knew better. Everybody knew better. No doubt about it. Ms. McGriz was a witch, for sure. Just after dark, a pirate, a skeleton, and the wicked queen from Snow White came for brother and sister. They were Freddy, Lizzie, and Queenie, of course, and together they ventured out into the darkness with their trick-or-treat bags. Before they could get started collecting Halloween goodies, they were joined by some worrisome company, Too Tall Grizzly and his gang, out for mischief. Too Tall didn't waste any time trying to get brother, sister, and their friends to go along with him and his gang. Come on, we'll show you goody goodies how to have some real Halloween fun, he said, pulling brother along with him. What sort of fun, asked brother wearily. <laughs> oh, you might say we're going to put the trick back in trick or treat, he said, chuckling. It was so dark that brother and the others didn't notice where they were headed. Hey, said sister, this is Crooked Lane. That's right, said Too Tall. We're going to play a few tricks on old witch McGriz. What sort of tricks, asked brother. Her gnawed, twisted old treehouse loomed ahead. First, whispered Too Tall, taking a roll of toilet paper from his jacket. We'll decorate her house with a little of this. Then, maybe we'll tie a few knots in her clothesline. Then, smear some honey on her broomstick so she'll stick to it when she tries to fly. <laughs> but before Too Tall and his gang could start their mischief, the front door opened and a bright yellow light stabbed the darkness. And there in the doorway stood the frightening figure of old Miss McGriz. Ah, she said, in a gravelly voice. I'm ready for you. She then led the terrified cubs into a cozy living room. To their great surprise, there was a big tray of beautiful candy apples all prepared for Halloween visitors. Mama was right, whispered sister to brother. Miss McGriz really is a sweet, kind old person. The cubs thanked her for the beautiful apples and went about the rest of their trick-or-treat business. Papa Bell looks surprised, doesn't he? Later that evening, brother and sister were at home looking over all the treats they had collected. The beautiful candy apples stood out, and Papa Bear asked where they came from. From Miss McGriz, answered brother. From that 
scary looking old grouch puss that lives down uh, Crooked Lane? Asked Papa. That's right, said Brother, taking a delicious bite of his candy apple. You must really try to remember, Papa, said Sister, giving her apple a little lick. Appearances can be quite deceiving. Well, that ends our story. I hope you enjoyed it. There are many more stories in this series of the Bernstein Bears. Until next time, this is the narrator, out.